Welcome back, networking enthusiasts. Last time we've set up our basic NF tables firewall so it can control the flow of network traffic to protect our server from unauthorized access or malicious activities. Today we'll continue our firewall journey by looking into some additional features of sets like intervals, automatic merging, and timeouts. My name is Philip. Let's get started. If you are new to NFTables Firewall, I encourage you to watch my introduction video as some of the things we'll be doing today rely on that knowledge. Let me go back to one of the previous examples. What do we have here? A counter that counts our packets, a name set that stores the list of source IPs that are allowed to connect, the input chain that accepts connections that are already established, allow new connections to TCP port 2020 or 8080 from the IPs that are in the allowed IP set, and finally drops everything else. We use an anonymous set to group two ports together so we can have a single rule instead of two rules, each with one port. We use the allowed IPs name set to separate our firewall rules that remain static from the list of source IPs that may change in time. In my previous video, I've already shown you that it's possible to add an IP to the set with the NFT add element command. What if you'd like to add a network range in CIDR format? Let's try to add 192.168/16. We got an error. Luckily, the error message gives us a solution. In order to add an IP range to the set, you need to add flux interval parameter. Let's do that. Now, let's reload our configuration with the nft-f command. I will try to add the same IP range to the set one more time. This time it worked. We have a CIDR IP range added. Few things to mention. Set elements are unique. In other words, we can try adding the same element over and over again, and we'll still have the same element present only once. Another thing is that we can use a range notation with a dash. This will allow the IPs that end with 0 through 1 to 3. If IPs can be written in CIDR notation, NF table will do that. Let me show you an example. I will add a range of IPs from 0 to 15. That was stored as a slash 28. Additional nice feature is auto merge. I will open our config file and add an auto merge keyword. Now I will reload and list the configuration. Did you see what just happened? Our two IP addresses were combined into a network range in CIDR notation. Moreover, auto merge allows us to specify overlapping ranges. For example, let me add 172.27.97/24 range that overlaps with the two IP addresses added earlier. Let's reload and list the configuration. Because the slash 24 overlaps the two IPs in the set, and the tables did optimize the set by removing those two single IPs and leaving only the CIDR range. Another useful flag is called constant. Let's add it to our configuration. And reload it. If a constant flag is enabled on a set, it will not allow you to modify it. Trying to do that will throw an error. Sets can be populated upon creation in the configuration file or later from the command line. There is yet another option to modify the set dynamically as a reaction to traffic. Let me show you a basic use case. Our task at hand is to count the number of outgoing new TCP connections along with the target IP address and ports as well as the user that made the connection. Let's start by creating a brand new setup. 
Let's clear the configuration with flash rule set. Then let's create a new table of IP type and name it filter. Then we'll create a new set and name it outgoing TCP connections. This will store our statistics. Now we need to specify the type of elements that our set will store. It's a mandatory parameter. We'll start with the type of keyword. Then first information we want to track is the user ID that initiates the connection. Luckily, NF tables can match by user ID that owns the socket. To do that, we need to specify meta socket uid. Then we provide the dot to perform concatenation. Next, we'll store the destination IP address. And finally, we'll store TCP destination port. I will also add a counter keyword that will create counters for each element of our set. Let's go through our set definition one more time. We have a set named outgoing TCP connections. Set stores elements that consist of user ID that owns the socket, destination IP address and destination TCP port. It also has a counter for every element of the set. Okay, our set definition is ready. Let's move to the part where we will populate the set with new elements. First, I will define a new chain and name it output. Then let's tap to the output hook of the chain type filter and set the default policy to accept. This will cause all outgoing traffic that is initiated by our server to go through that chain. Finally, let's capture the traffic that we want. We'll map the traffic based on state from the connection tracking table. We want the connection state to be new. This will cause the rule to capture all new connections. Then we want to match IP packets where the protocol is set to TCP. So far, the rule will capture all new TCP connections. Finally, the key part of the rule. Instead of accepting or denying the traffic, we'll use the add keyword. This will cause the matched element to be added to the set. Then we specify the set name. In our case, it's outgoing TCP connections. And after set name, we need to provide which properties of the match traffic should be added to the set. Of course, this needs to match the set definition. I will add the user ID of the originating socket, followed by destination IP, followed by destination TCP port. Finally, let's reload and list our configuration. Our set is empty. To see the rule in action, I will download packages information with the apt update. This will definitely generate some outgoing traffic. Now, let me show you the configuration. Do you see what happened? Our set got populated with some new elements. We have the user ID that made the connection. It's 100. We can check who that was with get end command or just by grabbing the password file. Then we have the target IP followed by TCP port. Every row is measured with an individual counter. Let's try connecting from root user and list the set one more time. Here we have a new element added with UID set to zero, that's root. We can also add the dash N option to get the reverse DNS lookup of the IP. Just to sum up, we did build a new set that stores the ID of the socket owner, destination IP and destination port. Then we tapped into the outgoing hook to match outgoing packets. We matched by TCP connection and added every new connection to the set. This was a very basic example, but imagine what can be done as possibilities are endless. Last thing I'd like to show you today is called timeout. What it allows you to do is to set an expiry date on a set element. Basically, you can add an element with 10 seconds timeout and it will be stored in the set for 10 seconds only and then it will be removed from the set. This will allow you to do some interesting things. I will just demo one of the many use cases. 
Let's say we'd like to block any IP for 24 hours that tries to connect to port 22 more than two times in 60 seconds. Okay, let me show you how it's done. I will start with a blank configuration. First, we need to flush existing rules. Then let's create a new table and name it filter. As we'll be filtering incoming traffic, I will create a new chain and name it input. Let's attach to the input hook and set the policy to accept. We want the connections that are already established to be accepted. Because we are playing with incoming SSH traffic, I will allow my source IP to connect no matter what. I don't want to lose management access to the server. Okay, we are ready to start playing with the timeout feature. Let's create a new set and name it stage one. It will store source IPs, so we set the type as IPS other. Finally, let's add a timeout flag to indicate that this particular set should support timeouts. Now, let's go back to our input chain and match new connections where TCP destination port is set to 22 and add them to stage one set. We are adding the source IP with timeout set to one minute. Let's load the configuration, list it, the set is empty. Let's try connecting to port 22 from a client machine. And list the configuration one more time. A new element with source IP of our client has been added to the set. The timeout counter was one minute and it's counting down. Once one minute passes, the entry will be removed from the set. I will add a second set and name it stage two. It will store source IP address and support timeouts. Let's add another rule that will match new connections. The trick is it will match a new connection only if the source IP is already on the stage one list. Then we match the protocol to TCP and destination port to 22 and finally add the element to stage two set. We are adding the source IP with timeout set to one minute. We are going too fast? No worries. Let's analyze this rule with live traffic. I will load and list the configuration. Both sets stage one and stage two are empty. Let's make the first connection attempt to port 22 TCP and list the configuration. The source IP we are coming from was not part of any set, so it did match this rule and was added to the stage one set. If we wait for 60 seconds and list the configuration, we can see the source IP was removed from the stage one set. Let's try the same thing. So I'll connect to port 22 from the client. The IP was added to stage one set. I will connect one more time while the IP is still in the stage one set. This time the IP got added to stage two set because it hits this particular rule that adds the IP to the stage two set only if it's already part of the stage one set. Let me reiterate, this rule is responsible for adding a new connection to stage one set and keeping it for 60 seconds. It matches only the first initial connection. This particular rule adds the IP to the stage two set only if it's already part of stage one set. In other words, this rule will catch a second connection from the same source IP, assuming the first and second connections were initiated no more than 60 seconds apart. Let's catch a third connection within 60 seconds. I will create a new set and call it stage three. It will store source IP address that you want to block and also support timeout. I will add a new rule that matches a new connection only if it's already on the stage two set. 
the protocol is TCP, the session port is 22, and we want to add the IP to stage 3 set, but this time the timeout will be one day. This rule will match only if it's a third connection from the same source IP within 60 seconds. Let's try that. I will reload the configuration and try connecting for the first time. The source IP got added to the stage one set. Let's try connecting one more time within 60 seconds. The source IP got added to the stage two set. Let's try connecting for the third time within 60 seconds. The connection was added to the stage 3 set, but this time with a 24-hour timeout. The final step is to block all IP addresses that are part of stage 3 set. Those are the IPs that tried connecting to our server three times within 60 seconds. To do that, I will add the following rule at the end of our input chain. We want to match new connection where the source IP is on the stage 3 set, and TCP destination port is 22. The action that we want to take is drop. Let's test our final solution. I am loading the configuration. Let's try connecting from the client. One, two, three. Third connection was blocked. This source IP will be blocked for another 24 hours until the timeout expires. Those are just a few basic examples of how powerful this technique can be. Adding or removing elements of a set in response to the traffic, along with setting the timeouts, will allow you to implement various logic. Stay tuned as next time we'll talk about maps and verdict maps, and then we'll move to tracing and logging.